Right, Ethan, thank you. Folks in Madisonville, they're looking for answers after yet another truck crashed into a railroad bridge this week and got stuck. It happened Tuesday, and neighbors say it happens nearly every other month. Brady Williams joins us after talking to people in that area about this ongoing issue. Yeah, so I was actually here on Tuesday night with Photog Philip Krinsky, and we saw that that truck had its entire trailer just ripped off the top of it. You'll see that in the video here in a second. But that happened despite numerous signs leading up to this in both directions. Ordinarily, there's a sign that says 12 foot up there, but it gets knocked off because this is constantly happening. So they know that they have some solutions throughout here. The question is, what's the solution that's finally going to stop this? Once every six weeks or so, you're going to get a truck that runs into it, especially on this side of the bridge. Madisonville's railroad overpasses date back to 1905. The population blossomed after that. Madisonville became a part of the city. And now, nearly 120 years later, it destroys trucks. In the tri-state region, this bridge has the most amount of strikes by a very, very, very large margin. Neighbors even have a Facebook group dedicated to the many, many trucks that end up hitting it or even getting stuck. Kerry Devery is the transportation manager for the Madisonville Community Council. He says most of the time they see rental vehicles hitting it. Uh, but occasionally you do get somebody who is driving like professionally, you know, like a CDL license. It's pretty rare, but that's what happened earlier this week. That was Tuesday night, and it had the road stopped up well into Wednesday morning. Devery says these strikes are happening despite numerous warning signs leading up to the bridge, even one that detects large vehicles, flashes a sign to turn around, and triggers a red light. I think some of the videos kind of looks like people see that and then try to beat the red uh, and just making the situation worse. Devery says it's not the bridge's fault. It's regularly inspected. The bridge is just 12 feet tall, and it's marked as such. As much as some of these are very scary uh, collisions into the bridge, uh, it does seem like they do a good job of inspecting it and making sure that it's fine. He says they've considered more drastic measures in the past to give vehicles a bit more headroom. Uh, the city got a federal grant almost like 10 years ago at this point to lower the road, and uh, a lot of the adjacent property owners didn't like that design, so they ended up returning that funds. I spoke with some of those owners off camera, and they say they do worry about major road work strangling access to their businesses, but the railroad has also been keen to prevent any changes. So Devery says they need to consider more in-your-face warning systems. And the only other thing that I've seen uh, people try is like a, a curtain uh, that would actually physically strike trucks at that height uh, to get like a, that drying sensation. Um, or you just got to replace the bridge or the road. Devery says despite the repeated efforts and the continued accidents, the city will continue its efforts to get trucks to stop. Right. So it is just like this circle on their map that they're always going to uh, be aware of. Other issues that he mentioned as well is the fact that this road is narrow on the west side of the bridge. It's just two lanes over here. It's two through lanes and a turning lane. So even if you're someone who has seen the signs, you've made it this far, you've got a truck that's too big, you have to turn around, and that's going to cause all kinds of traffic jams in the area. So whatever solution they land on is likely going to be something that has to keep them either away from this place or make it so that they can get underneath that bridge. Live in Madisonville, alongside photojournalist Philip Krinsky, Brady Williams, Fox 19 Now.